It is not common to hear about female pirates, but it's interesting to see that some of the most successful pirates in history were females. Let's take a look at three female pirates that ruled the sea. Cheng was born in 1775. She worked as a prostitute until she was captured by pirates. A while later, she received a marriage proposal from a pirate named Cheng. She married him for 50% of control and share of his fleet. Through this marriage, she becomes a stepmother to the adopted son of Cheng, named Chang Pao. You may know him as Cao Feng, portrayed by Chao Yong Fu in the Disney movie Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. When Cheng accidentally falls overboard in 1707 and dies, she forces Chang to marry her and takes full control of the fleet. In some books, it's said that she forces Chang to marry her, and in others, it is said that she seduces him by sleeping with him within a few weeks of her husband's death with the goal of marrying him to get full control of the fleet. At this point, the entire crew was afraid of Cheng as she was a formidable warrior. As soon as she gained full control, she issued several codes of laws. First, anyone giving their own orders, ones that did not come down from Cheng or disobeying those of a superior was beheaded on the spot. Second, no one was to steal from the public fund or any villagers that supplied the pirates. Third, all goods taken as booty had to be presented for group inspection. The booty was registered by a purser and then distributed by the fleet leader. Another set of codes were set for female captives. In the usual events, the female captives were made to marry the pirates. If a pirate marries, he must be faithful to her. The ones deemed unattractive were released and any remaining were ransomed. Pirates that raped female captives were put to death. But if a pirate had consensual sex with captives, the pirate was beheaded and the woman he was with had cannonballs attached to her legs and was thrown overboard. Violations of these laws resulted in whipping, clapping in irons, or death. Within a few years, her fleet was 300 strong ships with over 40,000 pirates working under her. Without fear, she entered into conflicts with existing empires of the time, such as the British Empire, the Portuguese Empire, and the Qing Dynasty. In late 1809 and early 1810, her fleet suffered a series of defeats inflicted by the Portuguese Navy at the Battle of the Tiger's Mouth. The Chinese government at the time offers her an amnesty deal for all pirates who agreed to surrender, ending her career that same year. She then retires her pirate days and opens up a gambling house. She died in 1844 at the age of 69. She is considered the most successful pirate in history. Rachel was born in Pennsylvania in 1760. She lived on a farm but loved staying near the waterfront. On one occasion, while staying on the docks, a group of girls attack her and a young gentleman named George Wall comes to help her. The two become lovers and ends up getting married. The newlyweds move to Boston and Rachel gets a job as a servant. During this time, her husband goes fishing on his boat. He had a crew of five and each had a lover. He then convinces Rachel to join them and becomes pirates. The crew worked off the coast of New Hampshire. Right after a storm, Rachel would go onto the deck and scream for help in hopes of luring people who would come to help her. They would then murder them and steal their goods. They captured 12 boats and stole about $6,000 in cash and killed 24 sailors. When her husband was swept out to sea by accident, she returned to Boston and again worked as a servant. Even then, she still went to the harbor and stole things out of boats. Her final robbery happened when she saw a young woman named Margaret Bender wearing a bonnet which Rachel wanted. She attempted to steal the bonnet and rip Margaret's tongue out, but was caught and arrested. She was tried for robbery on September 10, 1789, but requested that she be tried as a pirate, while maintaining that she had never killed anyone. However, she was found guilty of robbery and sentenced to be hanged on October 8, 1789. She said to have quoted, Into the hands of Almighty God I commit my soul, relying on His mercy, and die an unworthy member of the Presbyterian's church in the 29th year of my age. As her final words, her death marked the last occasion a woman was hanged in Massachusetts. She may also have been the first American-born woman to become a pirate. Charlotte was born in 1778, the daughter of Thomas and Anne Badger. Her family was poor, so one day, she stole money and a silk handkerchief to help them out. 
she ended up getting caught and she was sentenced to seven years of penal servitude. She was sent to Hobart as a domestic servant aboard the Venus, but the ship's crew mutinied and took control of the ship. According to varying accounts, Charlotte then dressed in male attire, armed herself with a pistol, and flogged the captain, and urged the male convicts to rebel. The group sailed to Rangua Bay in the Bay of Island in New Zealand, where Charlotte became one of the earliest recorded white women in New Zealand. It's also written that after Badger had left, the Maori captured the Venus and burned it to retrieve the scrap metal and cooked the men on board. She is widely considered to be the first Australian female pirate. Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe for more content.